beautifuls, this is Aromi here, and welcome out to hit my headset. Welcome back to Taylor Tales. I made up more some money, if you guys can see, 28,000. Probably, oh my god, six. that takes 6,000 already. Oh my god, that was a lot. Today, Sarah and I are going shopping together. I asked her if she wanted to join me as I am planning on buying a new cell phone. It wasn't because of Neil's comment about my phone still having buttons and looking like a fossil. Well, maybe. A little. Regardless, I decided it was kind of time to upgrade to his smartphone. Especially since Sarah keeps asking me to download this app so we can chat together. I figured she'd be the best person to take me with... T take with me on a phone shopping trip. We enter the electronic store and I look around at all the phones that are on display. Their price tags are pretty brutal. Which one do you have? I asked Sarah. Sarah walks towards one of that, that looks sleek and black. This one, the Imperium 6. Big, but still compact enough to fit in my pocket. Hmm. I don't know what I should pick. The price tag on Sarah's phone is $699. And I would prefer not to spend so much on a simple phone. Sarah gets distracted by the camera lens in the next aisle, and she gleefully hops over to check them out. Look at these lenses! I should really upgrade mine. I'd like a Laura... A, 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 a perter? A perter? For indoor photography. I pretend to know what Sarah means and nod my head, all the while looking at, much, at a much cheaper cell phone. The cell phone I'm holding is white with a $249 price tag, and I really do not know what the difference is with the one set with the one Sarah has. Perhaps you simply pay more for a brand name. That could be it. I wish I could go too, says Sarah all of a sudden. Huh? Go where? I ask, looking up and seeing her head pop out over the shelf. Sarah walks back to where I am. That masquerade party of yours. Of course. Not of yours. Right. After I got that invitation from Neil, obviously I told Sarah about it, and she's been green with envy ever since. Want my invitation instead? Can I? She says, super serious. The pictures that I could take. I'd love to photo pho photograph some of those costumes in a ballroom. I'd almost, I, I'm almost tempted to let Sarah go in my place. She seems way more eager about the idea than I am. Sorry, I'm only going there in hopes of finding some clients, I say dejectedly. Neil is rich after all, and I'm sure he only mingles with rich people. It, I don't like to admit it, but he is right when he said it's a big opportunity for me. It could bump up my revenue. I know, says Sarah with a sigh. I can still dream. Have you decided what to wear yet? No. I can't even decide on a phone, let alone on my costume for a masquerade ball. But, oh, no, but I guess I should be diligent and make something that wows people. I'd love to wow Neil, make him stand there looking speechless at my craftsmanship. I'm sure you'll make something beautiful, I have no doubt about that. I'm trying to run my hair, run my fingers through my hair, cause it's all like sticking together. Cause I put like a serum on it. I give Sarah a smile. She always seems to have my back. Now, can we get back to why I'm here? I came here in the first place. I still don't know which one to pick. Sarah laughs and then continues looking for a cell phone with me. She eventually convinces me to buy the white one I had in my hands before. It has a 5.5 inch screen, a front facing camera, and does everything a smartphone should do. It's my first smartphone, so Sarah helps me get everything set up, telling the app she thinks I would need, and explaining how to use the touch commands. After a while, I think I understand everything well enough, and Sarah and I part ways. When I'm home, I fiddle around with my new phone. I'm entering my old contacts information, copying the numbers and names from my previous phone. I even enter in Neil's number, still listing him as His Majesty. To test it out, I send him a brief text on a chat messaging app that Sarah downloaded for me. I'm unsure if Neil has it as well, but she assured me that most people own the same app. Got a smartphone! Now you can't complain it's a fossil anymore. I smirk at myself. Neil isn't the only one with a fancy, fancy phone anymore. It's not the most expensive model that he probably has, but it's something. Mm -hmm. About five minutes later, it vibrates and I check. I can only assume this is Michiko, who doesn't feel the need to introduce herself in her first, <laughs> first message to me. Yes, it's me. You're so smart for figuring that out. Want a pat on your back? Mm -hmm. A simple compliment will suffice. Good boy. Mm -hmm. I'm not a dog. Could have fooled me. 
He doesn't reply anywhere after that. I'm a little bit disappointed. It's a lot more fun to rip someone when they, when they reply back to you. I guess I should start on my costume for the masquerade ball. I love their conversations though. You have an important request waiting for you in the client area. Please fulfill this request and unlock the next chapter. Oh yay, I don't have to spend any more monies. Okay, a dress for the masquerade. Holy! I don't have that material. <laughs> Oh, wait. No, wait. You gotta go shopping now. Uh, the top she wanted is this one. Well, even if I didn't freaking buy, uh... Do you want to buy floor for 5,000? I guess. Do I have all that crap? I don't know if I have all that crap. Do I have all that crap? Details? No, we gotta get the all. Do I have the stars? It's not on the list. I probably have it then. What is this? Sparkles. I can't. Even, I can't even see those sparkles. I'm assuming that's what she wanted, though. All right, let's design this outfit here. This. She wants a black with a lacy design. Wait. How do I get that design, bro? How? That's lace. Gosh darn it. I have to go buy that other thing? Right? I have to buy that line? What is it called though? No. Well, how do I do it? How do I do that? Neckline is this. There's no sleeves. Hemline? There's no hemline. Black. How do I get that? I don't know how to get that part. <laughs> Parkles. How do I get that detailing on that shirt? How do you- what? 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 Okay, this is difficult. I don't know how to get that detail. I need to buy that gold as well. I don't know what yellow it is, so I'm just buying all the yellows because that's what I did. Oh, that's orange. Ops. Is it this? Is that it? That had to be it. That had to be it. That had to be it. I'm broke now. <laughs> I hope you appreciated that. Emline? Collar. Call, collar. Here it is. Collar is, um... This yellow, this lace. What color is that lace? Oh god, is that lace brown? I don't have that. Crack. It's like I'm not done. I'm not done. This is actually really hard. Okay, it's one of these freaking browns. So, I'll just buy all the rounds. Why not? Okay, let's go return now. Clients, this masquerade ball thing. Oh, uh, she wants this. This is completely black. No sleeves. The call hemline is... Uh... This yellow here with this white... Tailing... That color... Skirt is that, this... Sparkle. Finished! Alright, cool! I'm completely broke again. You'll need to wear... Okay. Not wearing the masquerade dress. Okay, they want me to wear that dress. Where'd I put it? Whoa! I don't remember my dress looking like that. <laughs> but okay. I'm wearing it now. 
I don't remember my masquerade looking like that. That was beautiful, though. It's the day of the ball. I've been working long and hard on my own dress. Its golden accent stitch on a black fabric was done with love and care. The dress looks looks and feels expensive, and I'm quite proud. I've outdone myself. Even the mask is looking fabulous with its black black feathers and zir zirconum studs. Neil will eat his words when he sees this. I just want to see that look on his face. We've been texting back and forth sometimes while I was making the costume. He would brag about his costume being the best, and I would brag about my own progress, keeping him posted with a few texts here and there. Most of them were thinly veiled excuses to take a jab at each other. I didn't realize texting Neil like this wasn't going to be in the pain I imagined it to be. Honestly, it was sort of fun sometimes. He hasn't been a pain in the butt recently. That's not to say he hasn't used his impressive vocabulary to chew me out, because he certainly has. Except this time, I fire off my own words right back at him. He'll mention something about having a bet with someone, but I wouldn't indulge in more information about it when I, when I pressed. Perhaps he made a bet to see if I would be wearing a trash bag to the ball or something stupid like that. No, Neil will be wild so badly, I'll knock him right off his feet. I'm not knocking into him on purpose, that is. Either way, I'm all dressed up, make makeup on, and ready to go. Ooh, Grand Hotel. A taxi takes me to a large hotel hosting the event. There's even a red carpet rolled out in front of me. They went all out. I suddenly feel like royalty when I exit the car and my heart speeds up a little bit. This is definitely getting exciting. At the door, I shot my... I, I, I shop. I show my invitation to the lackey, and he welcomes me inside, pushing the large white doors open for me. I follow the red carpet up the stairs, lifting up my dress so that my heels don't tear the fabric. For a small while, I feel a little bit like Cinderella, and I enter the barroom with a slight smile on my lips. I look fancy in here. The sound of classical music hits my ears immediately. My mouth just about drops open at the sight before me. The room is gorgeous, but not only that, the people are as well. I, 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 I wish I could see them. <laughs> the room is filled with people buzzing around. Lots of gold, purple, and blue sequin outfits are amongst the crowd. And of course, the most important thing, the extravagant mask. People with the most exquisite mask walk by me, and, sen and I'm suddenly really glad for the fact that I place so much time and effort into making my own, because some of these, some of these make mine pale in comparison. If there are any celebrities among them, I wouldn't know, considering everyone is hiding their identity. Not wanting to stand there and gawk at people, I quickly make my way over to one of the buffet tables. It's a long table with a white tablecloth, loaded with dishes of expensive-looking food. I'm surprised they didn't skimp out on the food, because I've seen what kind of buffet food a hotel serves. But I guess Neo deserves nothing but the best after all. A waiter quickly notices me, notices I'm not carrying a drink in my hand, and hands me a glass of sparkling champagne. I thank him and start to take a little sip. Maybe the alcohol will give me a bit of courage, because I'm starting to feel a little out of my element here. I should be mingling, introducing myself to people, and get my name out there. But now that I'm here, all alone, it feels rather daunting. Perhaps I'll stick to finding Neil first. My eyes peer through my mask to see if I can spot him anywhere. He shouldn't be that hard to spot. He's got purple hair after all. I sway from side to side to the music, my dress making swooping motions as, I, as it tries to follow my body. All of a sudden, someone from behind me tries to walk in front of me and ends up bumping into me. My champagne almost flies out of my hand and <laughs> hands onto the man's suit. I gasp out loud when I catch it in time before it spills out. And then I look at the man who knocked into me. Happens to be you, dude. It's Neil. There is no hiding that purple hair after all, even though his eyes are covered by a dark shadow of mask. He's wearing a black and white outfit that reminds me of a joker. It looks well made. His bragging wasn't for any reason after all. To be honest, it looks rather good on him. I grin at him, but of course he had to be the first person I ran into. You should have knocked into me a bit harder. At least then I'd get the pleasure of ruining another shirt of yours. I joke. I stand there tall and proud, showing off my costume in all its full glory. I wait for his reaction, something I've been dying to see once I started working on my costume. He you know, straightens himself and cocks his head to the side. Excuse me, he says. Not the reaction I was hoping for. Come on, I know you knocked into me on purpose. You should admit that at least. No, I did not. You're a strange one. I'm not the one knocking into people on purpose. Right. Neil then continues to ignore me and presume to resume looking through all of the buffet food. I chew on my lip and frown. Is that he's all is that all he's going to do? He's not going to tease me, not even a single word. I don't think he knows it's us, honestly. I'm a bit peeved that he hasn't even 
hasn't started anything yet aside from rudely bumping into me. So I guess I should be the one to start the battle of words. So did your tailor make that costume for you? But though you were bragged about him before, I had expected you to come wearing nothing but a diamond encrusted cape. There, he had to respond to that. He looks up from the buffet, then he casts his hand around the edges of his blazer and puffs out his chest. My costume was made by the best, thank you very much. <laughs> he then turns on his heel and walks away from the buffet. My mouth drops open. Didn't you just ditch me? Oh, no he didn't. He disappears amongst the crowds. So I hurry after him, warming myself through the sea of people who are all trying to dance. I try to look over the costumes and tall hats, but the feathers and bows are blocking all my sight, and soon I've lost Neil. Why did he leave? Maybe he just didn't rec realize it was me. That could be it. I look so different from normal that Neil had no idea it was me. Perhaps. I growl in frustration and try to warm myself together. Uh, warm myself past another lady. Who suddenly notices I'm trying to get past her and she faces me. Well, hello there, pretty lady. She says with a slur in her words. Oh god, someone's drunk at this time already? How much does she have to drink? Where are you going? If her breath is, an in is any indicator, she drank. A lot. Are you alone? No, I'm... I'll accompany you. You seem so lost and sad. I can't seem to really get a word in as the woman starts to ramble. Sad and lonely like my cousin. You should meet him. Um, I'm actually trying to... Well, then let's go meet him. <laughs> She's taking us to Neil. She swings an arm around my neck and pulls me close to her until I'm squished against her itchy costume. Against my will, I'm being dragged around by this random drunk woman. Well, when all I really want to do is find Neil again, we pass by a couple of groups who are dancing until I'm suddenly thrown into the arms of a man. Oh, no, that is not Neil. This is a, this, this guy. Well, I want this guy. <laughs> the glass of champagne in my hand spills all over the floor. Some of it splatters on the shoes of the strange man. I take a step back and cringe. What if this is some celebrity I just spilled my drink on? Oh no, I'm so sorry about that. I got pushed. Look, I brought a singing, uh, brought you a single lady, says the woman with a large smile. Now stop moping around and have fun. She looks like a perfect candidate to be your fiancé, no? She blows him a kiss and swaggers away. Who's this guy, though? I see you've met my cousin, he says as he stares off into the distance where the woman disappeared to. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Here, let me clean this off for you. I place the empty glass down on a nearby table, then take my handkerchief from my purse and bend down to clean a shoe. I feel mortified for spilling champagne on a stranger or someone famous. A white mask greets my vision. The man is down on my level with his hand on top of my hand. He's way too close for comfort. What are you doing? He asks. Cleaning? <laughs> I state simply a bit flabbergasted that he's this close to me and even holding my hand and it's making my heart beat a little fast. He gently takes the handkerchief from my hands, wipes away the champagne from his shoe, and, he sl and then he slips his hand into mine again and he lifts me up. Such a smooth gentleman here. Suddenly I feel like I'm being treated as a princess, and that whole Cinderella feeling is back. I gulp and stare down his gloved hand, which is still holding onto mine. This is a weird atmosphere. When he sees my eyes looking at our hands, he drops it. Well, look, it's been nice meeting you, but I need to go find my friend. I cut him off. I need to get back to Neil. I don't really want to embarrass myself any further in front of celebrities. It's making me feel completely out of place. However, didn't I decide to attend this ball so I could show off my dress to other people? In case I sh could get some clients out of it, why would I be rushing out to find Neil all of, a all of a sudden? Then again, I do still want to find him and make sure he knows it's me this time. A friend, he inquires. I simply nod my head and then turn around to leave, but suddenly a hand grabs my arm, pulling me back. But wait, don't you need to replace your glass of champagne, says the man. I frown. To me, it didn't really matter. Sure, I guess. And then, can I get back to fighting Neil? The man snaps his fingers to alert one of the waiters, who quickly comes down to offer a tray of glasses filled with champagne. The man picks one of the glasses and holds it out for me. For you- Oh wow, the shooting star! Did you guys see that? <laughs> for you, he says with a slight smile. The man's voice is familiar, but I'm not quite sure where to place it. Perhaps I've seen him on TV. Yes. Maybe. Gosh, I might really be talking to a celebrity. Well, if it, if he's at this party, he has rich as well. Perhaps I can turn him into a client instead. Thank you. I gently grab it and quickly take a small sip. I really do apologize for spilling some on you. He smiles warmly at me. That's alright. 
I'm going to be needing more alcohol if you'll continue to treat me like a princess like this. It's starting to feel a little weird. The fact that everyone's wearing costumes and looking like a glitter bomb. <laughs> like, looking like a glitter bomb went off in the place. Does it really help my make matters feel less weird? Sarah would be so jealous of me right now. I study the man in front of me. The man's costume is composed of a golden vest, covered in a diamond pattern and underneath a silky black blouse with matching black pants. There's a silver cape attached to his neck that it looks expensive and skillfully made. I admire who created it, whoever created it. You have a lovely costume, I compliment him, still looking for a way to turn him into a client of mine. He coughs, coyly turning his head away from me. Thank you, ma'am. Yours looks, yours looks exquisite as well. Great, at least there's someone who likes my work. I give him a big smile. I feel like I can take on Neil now. And anything he dishes out at me. So, who's this friend of yours that you're looking for? He asks. I tap my finger against the glass. Neil and I aren't really friends, but how else do I describe him? Frenemies? Well, um, I guess we're maybe we're not really friends. But I'm looking for him regardless. The man chuckles a little. Then, do you want to find this not friend together? What does he look like? Well... Two people looking for someone is better than one, and at least he's being nice and everything. Even though I pu was pushed into his arms and spilled champagne on him. If I did that with Neil, I'd have an earful. What's he look like? Well, he's got purple hair, and he's got a black and white costume. Have you seen him around before? He asks. Yes, but I lost sight of him. He's probably looking for a mirror so he can admire himself. <laughs> the man snorts and flashes me a smile. I know just a place. Oh, do you? Do you happen to know the mirrors? He then offers his arm to me like a true gentleman. Swept away in this ballroom of extravagant costumes and chivalry, I link my arms with his. I guess there's no harm getting a little bit of fun out of this event. Crap, Neil at this point. I'm growing with this, like, secret guy. He leads me away from the crowd, further down another room where the music is less loud. There aren't many people around and Neil isn't amongst them. I drink more of my champagne then place it down near another table. Ah, oh, mirrors everywhere. That's when I noticed the reason why he led me to this place. There are a few gig giant and intricate mirrors on the wall. I assume they're gigantic. The frames are old and painted gold, but the most amazing thing is seeing myself in the mirror. Can I see myself again? Because I, I didn't really look at her that long. I don't look like me. It's no wonder Neil didn't recognize me. I hardly recognize me. I feel like I'm looking through a window and staring at someone else. Someone who's living a much more interesting life than I am. Wearing a dress I'd never wear. But for now, I am that person. The cloak of anonymity, anonymity is like a hide that I'm starting to like. It's beautiful, I find myself saying. I step closer to the biggest mirror, my arms slipping away from the man. It's from the early 19th century, originated from France, the man explains. It is said that people believe this mirror will show your true self. He chuckles a little. Sometimes the truth is not what people wanted to see. To be honest, I feel like I'm not even looking at myself right now. Like, it's someone else up there, I admit. I feel a bit sheepish, though. Or is that too silly? The man is quiet for a bit. Nothing but a slight smile appearing on his lips. That's not, silly th that's not a silly thought at all, he reassures me. I can imagine this is not your everyday wardrobe, but that's the allure of it, isn't it? He looks at me. To be someone you're not for a day. To talk to people you never talked to before. I'm still staring at the mirror and I see him standing next to me. He looked like a fairy tale couple. A prince and a princess. Maybe this is how Cinderella felt, I say. For one day she got to experience what it's like to be someone else. So Cinderella, what does it feel like? He asked with a devilish smile. I turn to face him this time and grin. I don't know, the night's only beginning. Wow, smooth talker me! I remember this ruin when that woman from before comes loudly crashing into the room. There you are! She yells as she spots a black haired man. I can see him visibly cringe when the woman approaches him. How are you getting along with my cousin? Nicely, I assume. She then pinches the man's cheek. Then treating her well? Don't scare her off! She's got the best dress here among the drivel of swines, meaning she's the best chance of getting, uh, at getting a fiance. I blush a little at the compliment and feel a tiny bit weird due to the fiancé comment. He has been treating me well, I answer for him. Good job. Now, be sure to give her a ride home. I'm going to see if they, they've got any more of those expensive champagne. Bye-bye for now, darlings. Okay. The woman trails her bow around me, letting it slip around my neck before she skidaddles away, but not before tripping on her own boa, and then carrying on like nothing happened. 
I can't help myself, I laugh out loud. The black haired man behind me keeps quiet. Your cousin is quite charming. He shrugs a little bit. Don't mind her. She makes it a point to get drunk as fast as possible. So take anything she says with a grain of salt. But you give me a ride home, no? After all, she insisted on it. I toy with him. He smirks at me. Doesn't Cinderella have her own carriage? No. No, she doesn't, remember? It turns into a pumpkin. Then maybe you should hurry and go home for midnight. Don't want that spell wearing off. Uh, flirt with a stranger? Go find Neil? Oh, flirt with a stranger, bro. He's cute. <laughs> the smile on my lips linger a little bit. I feel myself swelling up in excitement. I don't know who this man is, yet I have no problems flirting with him. I mean, it's only it's only happening tonight, so we'll see Neil like plenty days. Every freaking day, we're gonna see Neil. We're not gonna see this stranger, though. I'm even feeling brave enough. Well, it must be the champagne. <laughs> to lean into him, close enough for my dress to brush up against him. I poke my finger into his chest with a small giggle. I guess I'll have to come find you after midnight then. The man simply smirks at smirks back at me, unafraid of my bold approach. Wasn't it the prince who was supposed to find Cinderella? Well, I don't mind if you chase me a little bit. <laughs> what the heck? I give him a wink and then reach for my champagne and turn around to leave him standing there speechless. I'm on some kind of sugar rush because I've never been this flirty before. It's because of the mask. It makes me feel like I can do anything to anyone. However, as much as I like flirting with strange men, it's time to look for Neil again. Or more clients. Either one will work. I explore the premises of the hotel and discover quite a few more interesting rooms, as well as the large courtyard they have decorated with LED lights. The moon is out and it's a little bit chilly, but I'm determined to find that weasel of a man again and give him a piece of my mind. Maybe even tease him about having other men flirting with me. Yes, that would be fun. I don't have much luck finding Neil, but I've at, at least been mingling a tiny bit with the others at the party. Mostly, I've been getting compliments on my costume, and I've returned the flip. A favor. I was gonna say flavor. I was like, that does not work. But Neil is nowhere in sight. After I've had two glasses of champagne enough to loosen up, I finally spot that purple hair again. Hey! I call out to him and walk up. Neil stops in his tracks to look at me. He's with a group of other men. Finally, I caught up with him. Do you think it's fun making me run around looking for you? Me? He asked, looking slightly confused. Yes, you. Who else? I think you've mistaken me for somebody else. I roll my eyes. I couldn't possibly mistake your pompous, 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 pompous attitude. It's unmistakable. Who's this? Ask one of the other men. I don't know. Some crazy lady. <laughs> Says Neil. What? I immediately yell out. I'm not crazy. It's me, Chico. Come on, let's go. Says the other man. No, wait. Neil, I know it's you. Come back. I reach out for his black mask and tear it off his face. It's not Neil. That's not Neil. Yo, is Neil in the black hair? Oh my god! Is that him? <laughs> Green eyes stare back at me. That's definitely not Neil. My blood runs cold. Oh, I said with a blank stare. This is someone else completely. The man snatches back his mask and probably puts it back on. Crazy. Definitely not Neil's his name. He mumbles. Then he scuffles away with his group of friends. I awkwardly slink away from the crowd and find a quiet spot behind a corner to gather my wits again. My cheeks are burning from embarrassment, the chill of the night sting even more. I mistook some stranger for Neil. I even made some really nasty remarks. Oh no, I really do look crazy like this. Or just, just, you're that drunk girl. You're, you're just drunk. You're just drunk, okay? You don't, you're, you're gone. <laughs> I let this sink in for a while. The way I treat Neil, others are calling me crazy for it. Maybe it is crazy. Maybe those people are right. Our thing, our pettiness and arguments of atmosphere. Why are we even doing it? But it's not like I wanted to wanted it to be this way. To always argue with Neil, to find something insult something to insult him on. No, in the beginning I thought we could even be friends, considering we had met each other when we were kids before. And now look at us, we're essentially behaving like kids again. It doesn't matter what that Neil basically started it. I should have been the better person and not stoop down to his level. I'm ashamed of my own actions towards Neil. I shouldn't behave so petty and bitter. I sit down on a lone wooden bench and sigh. I'm quite sad right now. <laughs> Just where is Neil? What am I even doing at this party? I know I convinced myself it's because I wanted to make some connections for my business, but I can't really fool myself any longer. To be truthful, I just want to rub in his face that I had made a beautiful masquerade dress and hopefully he would have complimented me for it. Yet now I haven't even met the real Neil. We did, technically. Is everything alright? 
I nearly jump out of my own skin when I hear a sudden voice from behind. I crane my neck to see who it is. It's that black-haired man from before. No, that's Neil, bro. That's Neil. <laughs> Sorry for startling you, he asks. It, or he says, can I sit next to you? Are you Neil? <laughs> I scoot over a bit and pull my dress along to, along to make room for him. He slowly sits down next to me. I didn't see you around anymore. Anymore. I didn't see you around anymore. I thought you had already left in your carriage, he says. I flash him a tiny smile. No, no carriage for me. I'm feeling a little bit like a pumpkin, actually. I guess it's true what people say, that you can open up a lot more towards a stranger than someone you know, because I have no trouble letting this man know what I'm feeling. And why is that? He asks in a soft voice. I look into the distance of the yard where all the other people are dancing near the band playing music. I made a fool out of myself, I admit. Did you also get drunk and start pinching people's cheeks? I chuckle. Not exactly. I just mistook some stranger for someone I know and dislike, and I treated him horribly. Ah, a case of mistaken identity. Common during parties such as these. There's a silence between us, and I can hear the sound of the leaves ruffling in the wind, and I shiver just the tiniest bit. Like, it's completely natural the man leans closer to me, and I can feel his warm arm through the sleeve of his blouse. It's making my heart beat a little faster. Maybe you shouldn't treat people like that in the first place, he says. Not that I know what happened between you, of course. He quickly adds afterwards. It hits me right in the feels. He's completely right, of course. I shouldn't be treating Neil like that. Not at all. I want to say it's because he started it first, but that's just an excuse. I shouldn't have gone along with any of it, and I know it. No, you're right. I say with a sigh. How's your cousin doing? I decided to change the subject. Drunker? Lovely. I shiver once more. This man's body heat isn't enough to keep me warm. It's October after all. Before I can even say anything, the man drapes his cape around my shoulders. My fingers reach out for the ends to keep them from slipping off, slipping off, and my eyes look over at the stranger. A buoyant feeling wells up in my heart. That was such a kind gesture. Thank you, I whisper. I don't know what makes me feel warmer. The cape of the stranger's action. I fa- This cape? Oh, the cape, or the- <laughs> I read it wrong. The cape or the stranger's actions. I fasten the cape so that it stays around my shoulders. He simply nods his head at me and continues to look straight ahead to where all, the, all to where all of the people are dancing. My cousin, she hasn't yet done anything rash though. I usually expect her to be much more much more of a troublemaker. He continues our conversation like nothing happened. Seems like you're speaking from a lot of experience. I wish I wasn't. Growing up with her was hard enough, but then factor in that she's usually drunk. Sounds rough, I say. I don't really have much contact with my family aside from my mother. I think I would have liked having an older sibling or cousin looking out for me. Looking out for me? Meddling in my life? I don't really see a difference there. <laughs> he says with a sigh. Aw, she just wants you to find your Cinderella, I tease him. He huffs at that. But haven't I found her already? He says while looking at me. Oh my god, you're so cute! That was so- wow, that, that was smooth. That was so smooth like butter, oh my god. He brushed- Brushes his finger against the rim of my mask, and I can feel myself holding in my breath. Okay, I gotta pause real quick, because Tyler's calling me. Important. Okay, it wasn't as important as I thought. He, he was just calling me, because our friend was like... <laughs> our friend wanted the Dunkachino Tyler bought for me, and Tyler's, Tyler just want to go to Dunkin' Donuts again and get him one, so I was like, just just give him mine, and it, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It was an important call. I thought it was important. He's like, you guys should know... Whenever someone calls my phone, I usually never pick up because it's like, I hate talking on the phone. I'd rather text people. So, if you call me in the future, like, aka future friend, if you call me, I might not pick up. Unless, like, you're super important to me, then I'll probably pick up. Probably. <laughs> I'm kidding. Tyler and my dad are, like, the... And my brother are the people that I usually pick up right away. So everyone else is like, I'll, I'll wait for your voicemail. Okay. I'll wait for that voicemail. <laughs> anyway, let's continue on. Because this guy, oh my god, he's so cute. Please tell me it's Neil. He just dyed his hair or put on a wig for a day or something. He brushes his fingers against the rim of my mask. And I, and I feel myself holding in my breath. He's quite daring, isn't he? But I can't say I dislike it. That depends. We haven't even danced yet, I managed to say. The man promptly stands up from the bench. He bows slightly before me and, ext and extends his hand out to me. Why do you dance with me? He asks sweetly. Oh, what's this music? I 
It's pretty. This man sure knows how to sweep me off my feet, so there isn't even any hesitation when I accept his hand. He gently leads me out to a more open spot. And we're still the only ones there. I, I, I'm trying to hold in my hiccups. I can see the crowd in the background dancing as well to the slow music. He places an arm around my waist and slips his hands into mine. I place my other hand on his shoulder with a seductive smile. We begin to sway with him taking the lead. Our bodies are close and I can feel my skin heat up in excitement. Suddenly I don't need the cape anymore after all. With the sparkling LED lights and the moon out, this feels just like a fairy tale. I don't regret coming at all. Even if I haven't met up with Neil yet, I found my knight in shining armor instead, I guess. How do you like the party so far? He asks. His voice is just but a murmur in my ear. It's dazzling, that's for sure. He leans in closer, the grip on my hand tightening. You're the most dazzling out of them all. Can you please tell me you're Neil already? So I can be like flabbergasted and then feel embarrassed and then go home and cry about it. But then it's like, oh no, I really like this guy. I flush red at the compliment. He really doesn't back down in his flirting, but it's making me all warm and fuzzy, safe and secure in his arms. We continue to sway back and uh, back and forth, just the two of us, in complete silence. So, how about now? Will you be my Cinderella? The man asks in a low and husky voice. His face is leaning closer to mine, our mask almost touching. Kiss him? No, we're not that drunk. <laughs> we're not that drunk. Should I? Should I? Should I? Uh, evade his question? I don't want to ignore it. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever! I had to find out about something first. Hmm, what's that? It's probably a mixture of alcohol and courage that's makes, that makes me take the leap. I stand on my toes, my hand crossed from his shoulder towards the nape of his neck, where my fingers touch his soft black hair. And I lift my chin up, my entire body is buzzing with feelings, like some kind of drug. I force him to look down at me, our masks bump, in, bump, in, bump into each into one another, and I finally plant my lips on his. It's brief and innocent, mostly because he pulls back while drawing in his breath. The grip around my waist loosens, and he drops my hand. He stares at me in disbelief. I immediately feel my stomach turn, my face red in that light. Lightning speed. Oh my god, what have I done? He's so cute! It feels like the longest second in the world as he stares at me in shock. And suddenly I'm pulled back into him. Pulled back into him, and there's a hand on my cheek, gliding. Oh, gliding, not gliding, sorry. Guiding me closer to him as he kisses me. Whatever I felt just moments ago melts away in an instant, and instead I feel myself overwhelmed with passion. I cling my hand onto his vest and press closer to him. Closer to his lips, they wa they're warm like fire. I close my eyes and sigh against him. Against him, right? Yes. Okay. His lips ca caress me gently and almost hesitantly, trembling o ever so slightly, as if he's af afraid of something. But the longer we stay like this, the more confident he grows, especially when I'm responding and shivering to his touch. I'm in disbelief with what's happening, and we both break away from each other. I stare at his lips, which are red and moist. I want nothing more than to throw myself back at those. I breathe harsher than normal, and we stay like this for a little while. Him holding me in his arms. Please tell me this is Neil, or else I'm gonna feel horrible. My hand slips away from his neck, and I press it against his chest instead. I look down and suck in a breath. My entire body is tingling, I'm even trembling a little, and it's most definitely not because it's chilly outside. And he slowly lifts my mask a little bit, moving out of the way so he can reach my lips again more easily this time. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> I hold back a moan. I was really fighting to escape, and I daringly use my tongue to open his. His lip. Wait, open what? Open his lips. When we touch, there's a zing. Oh, all the zing. It reminds me of um, Hotel Trans Transylvania. Through my body like a shockwave, forget w about holding back moons. I have a hard time keeping myself standing up straight. We kiss over and over again, our tongues hungrily intertwined. It's like time stood still at that moment. Our magical moment is broken when someone suddenly discovers us. It's a drunk cousin. Neil! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Neil, there you are! I've been looking all over for you. Wow, hold on there. I told you to take her home. Not, <laughs> not ravish her on the spot. We both jump away from each other, flustered that someone caught us making out. 
But that's also when my brain started to stop acting like mush, and I had my common sense return to me. Neil? I repeat, suddenly feeling my heart drop into my stomach. I knew his voice was eerily familiar, but it couldn't be, right? It can't be. I quickly take the mask off his face. Oh my god, he's so precious! Oh, please be my prince! Please, I'm all yours, just take me now. <laughs> I feel my body turn to stone. There he is, Neil. No, I like Neil like this better. I like Neil better like this. With the black hair. Or at least his hair, this style. It could be purple, but this style... Killer. <laughs> With his golden eyes that were hidden away behind a mask, sporting a new black haircut, he's avoiding looking me in the eye. But it's definitely Neil, alright. You... I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. The, the, the storyline I just told you guys, like, five minutes ago, it's happening right now. I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. Suddenly, a million questions race through my head, and I'm filled with a feeling of disgust and betrayal. No, we're not slapping him. We're yelling at him. You! I repeat, you know this whole time! Oh my god, was I really making out with Neil this entire time? Why did you pretend to not know me? Neil brings his hand to his face, covering his mouth and looking away from me. I wasn't... I feel like I'm intruding on something, says the cousin. No, you're not intruding on anything. I'm about to leave right now. You know, makes a move to try and prevent me from leaving, but I gather my dress in my hand and hurriedly dash away, refusing to look at Neil any longer. I flee the ball running high on emotions. Yo, that was beautiful though. And a very long episode though. Oh, that off. We're not Cinderella anymore. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching this episode. Uh, let me save that. Just in case I accidentally close the game again. 6,000 for- Oh my god, it's so freaking expensive. I gotta, I gotta play more games to get more monies. Anyway, I- Oh my god. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Neil is such a smooth player, bro. I have goosebumps. That was lovely. I love that. I, I just love. I, I just love it. I hit my mic again. I'm so sorry. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.